Hey y'all, it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. And tonight is Monday night. And boy, have we been busy, just like everybody else. Busy, busy, dreadfully. I remember when my girls were little, we watched the ve Veggie Tales, and there was a song. And it would remind me, every time I would tell my kids I was busy, I would think of that song on the Veggie Tales. And of course, I remember very little of the song because of the way my brain works. Last night, we were at our church um, get-together with friends. We'd get together every other Sunday night. Y'all, and my brain was terrible. I couldn't think of any words. <laughs> it was just so embarrassing. Every time I'd go to say something, I couldn't recall what I was going to say. I told Chris today, I said, boy, you better get ready for that memory home for your wife because... There will be a day when I'm there, just like Mama was and just like her Mama was. It's scary, but that's just the way it is, ain't it? But anyway, with that said, um, yeah, there was a song when they were little. And uh, I don't know why my dogs are barking unless they heard me start my Bible study. They go, and y'all know I can't sing. But she go, busy, busy, dreadful. Busy, I've no idea what I have. You, you've no idea what I have to do. And so every time when I would look at my kids, it was like to teach you a lesson and not always to be too busy to do things. And so every time, because of the Veggie Tales, that I would look at my kids and I would say, "I'm busy," I would think of that song by the Veggie Tales. Anyway. Um, it's been a while since I've been on here with you guys to talk about Bible study. We have, uh, we're just going to talk about two chapters again. <laughs> I just don't want to get into 45 yet, which is when Joseph uh, is revealed, he reveals himself to his brothers. I'm not going to talk about that yet. And I'm also, I'm thinking about coloring my hair tomorrow, and I may do it live because several of you like my hair color. I'm going to show you what the brand of it is, and I'll probably do it. Um, tomorrow. I'm hoping that I get to do that. Okay. It is time for me to color it. I'm starting to have a few gray hairs showing up. And I, unlike some of you, my mother was one that colored her hair. Um, and I let her go gray towards the end because she wouldn't even let me wash her hair, much less color it. But um, I colored her hair and had it colored up until I just couldn't do it anymore. Okay. But mine, really and truly, y'all, most of my gray, I'm 50, okay? And most of my gray is like right here. And I'm noticing that when you go gray, it's kind of wiry. And it kind of wants to, like, it's wiry, you know? And it, and it wants to stick out right here. So the last time I cut my hair, what I did is I pulled my hair up in a ponytail. Because I cut my own hair, y'all know that. Pulled my hair up in a ponytail. I brushed this down right here, and I trimmed all of this off right here because most of it was gray anyway. It was so wiry, it looked ugly, especially when you're putting on and off your glasses all the time because it just, it's ugly. And so, anyway, this fell off. Let me put it back. I probably shouldn't cut off my side and make sideburns on my face. So anyway, I've colored it tomorrow. If y'all want to see me color it, I'm going to try to do it live. It'll be a hoot. I'll pro I may do it um, on YouTube, though. I may do a, a live coloring. Okay. With that said, I'm also going to get out my paparazzi jewelry that I got in the mail this week. But I'm going to do that. I'm, I'm not selling it or nothing. And I'm not really promoting it. I'm just, I just get excited when I get it in the mail, okay? And yeah, I order a lot of it because it's fun to me. And it's $5. Um, but anyway, with that said, let's do our Bible study. And then we'll come back and I'll show you my jewelry. Um, the last time I taught y'all, I'm so excited about what God did for Joseph. Because he took him out of that dungeon and he put him second in command with the um, Pharaoh. So, it was just an exciting time. And it was an exciting time to see that sometimes we have to go through bad times to get to, 
to be able to see what God has in store for our life. Um, and I wanted y'all to use that as an example because so many times everybody gets down. Things happen in their life. Bad things happen. I mean, um, we do things we shouldn't do. We make choices we shouldn't make. Um, sometimes it's not even what we do, but what somebody else does to us or what somebody else does to one of our family members. And we get down and we get angry and we get upset and we question and we wonder what in the world is God doing this for and what in the world is going on. But what we don't know is what's going to happen 10 years from now. And what we don't know is what's going to happen 20 years from now. And what we have to see is that we, our little selves, are not as important as we think we are. Um, and we have to come to the realization, we have to put ourselves and realize who we are compared to who God really is. Do we really believe that God is who he says he is? Do we really believe that he's as big as he says he is? And if we really believe it, we have to trust him that he is. And we have to trust the decisions that he makes in our lives and the things that happen in our lives. Now, some of the things that happen in our lives are because we make bad choices and there, ain't, there just ain't no, no other way to put it. Um, I'm going to give you an example, and some of y'all may like it, some of you may not, but I'm going to give you an example. Amy was in here the other night, and she was talking to me about a young man, and she was telling me about how she had been talking to him on the phone, and um, and she says he's poor, you know, and she says, Mama, he just don't hardly have nothing, and she said, I remember when um, I was talking to him the last time they had gotten to move from a mobile home into a, a house, and it was the first house they, they got, and it was really small, and he was just really excited. And she said, but it's just really simple. And I said, well, there's nothing wrong with being simple, Amy, as long as he is not where he is because of the choices his family has made. Now, with that said, don't jump to, you know, you don't jump to conclusions until you hear it. And I didn't even say that until she told me this. So, she said, Mama, I really probably shouldn't be talking to him. And I said, why? And she said, well, I thought he'd been in trouble before. And I thought he'd been on probation. And I found out that he's not getting along well with his stepdaddy. And so, they've been getting into some, um, what does she call it? Violence. You know, like some fights or something like that. And so he'd gotten in trouble. And I said, okay, Amy. And she told me that. And I said, you know, your mama got in a situation when she was young. And I fell in love with a boy. And I felt sorry for him in his situation. And I felt... And I've gotten into more than one situation where I felt sorry for somebody. And I felt the need because I felt needed. Um, I've always had a nurturing personality. That's how I am, believe it or not. That's just how I am. Like, Amy's the same way. She likes to feel needed. And she's going to be a good mama. And she's going to be a good wife. And she likes to feel that way. Um, some women are that way and some women are not. Um, I just had that that way about me and so whenever I felt the need or whenever I saw somebody that was in need I felt drawn to them and sometimes it wasn't always the smartest choice to make and sometimes it wasn't even God's choice for me just because it's your personality doesn't mean um, you can't also use your mind and make the right kind of choices and when I said that I said Amy I said um, I said you know, I felt sorry for him, too. And I said, um, she said, she said, well, when he came to the house, and this is what she told me. She said, when he came to the house, he got to visit. She said he was so excited to see our refrigerator and see that we could get water out of the door. He just thought that was the coolest thing. And I said, well, that is cool. You know, that's, you know, and, and I think, you know, she was happy to see that or whatever. We were kind of shocked, you know. But she had talked to him again, and I think she's in the bathroom. She might hear me. And she said that he, um, I'm listening. Anyway, she said that, 
she had talked to him again and that he had found out that we had bought this property in St. Mary's and that he was just blown away with the fact that we could have a home here and also be able to purchase a home in St. Mary's. Now, we don't have a big home. Like a lot of people put all their money in one basket and we've never done that. Um, but anyway, I mean, it's plenty big for me. It was bigger than the house I grew up. But we, had, we grew up in a little less than 1,500 square feet with four kids. So when I was coming up, but anyway, but she did have enough sense to look at me and say, you know what, mama? I said, well, you know what I mean? I said, did you ever get, to, did you ever think that they may be in a situation that they're in because of the way that they live, because of the choices that they make? Um, I mean, you're talking about violence and you're talking about them not getting along and you're talking about the law being involved and him being on probation. And y'all, that's what happens when people make bad choices. And that's what happens when people don't know Jesus. And I mean, but there's people that know Jesus that can make bad choices. Don't get me wrong. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that you have to make the right choices as a Christian and as a teenager or as a grown woman and meet like-minded people not to witness to, but of course to have a relationship with. And if you don't, then get ready because you're going to be susceptible to be that same person living in that small house, living in the middle of that violence one day. And you're going to look around and you're going to say, how did I get here? And I'm going to say to you, because of your choices, God didn't put you there. You put yourself there. Our God gives us a mind and he gives us choices. And he lets us make choices from the time we, we are little children. We get to decide if we want to wear a red shirt or a blue shirt. Or if we want to, if our, if our parents take us to Walmart. Sometimes we might have a choice of what color shoes we get to wear or what toy we pick out. And then when we go into high school, we may have a choice as to if we want to take home ag or drafting or, or construction. And then, and then when we get out of school, we have choices to make as to whether or not we're going to go to college and what kind of job are we going to have. Or are we going to make the choice to get drunk with our friends or are we going to have to make a choice to, to maybe be a witness for Christ or are we going to make a choice for go down to go down to the church. Or are we going to make a choice to go down to the bar? I mean, we have so many choices we, that we make every day. We also have choices that aren't big choices. We have choices that we make when, when our feet hit the floor in the morning. Um, are we going to be positive today? Are we going to make today a positive day? Are we going to love people today? Are we going to have feel sorry for ourselves today? Or are we going to count the blessings in our life today? And it makes a difference in our health, it makes a difference in our life, and it makes a difference in those around us and those that want to be around us. And it makes a difference in the choices that we make. So I'm kind of in a preaching mood tonight, can you tell? But um, I wanted to talk to you about that just because that happened this weekend with her. And it made me reflect on the choices that I made growing up. And I made plenty of bad ones. And they know it. I don't lie to my children. They ask me a question straight up. Me and Chris have never lied to our kids. If they ask us a question, we're not going to lie to them and pretend we didn't do something. We're going to let them know if we did or not and why we should or we shouldn't have. Okay? And she knows that I learned the hard way. And she knows that I would rather her not learn the hard way. Um, and, and that's why God gives us this book. You know what? I'm a mother telling my daughter that. And I sincerely want her to truly listen to me. And whether or not she listens to me is her choice. And God gives us this book. And he wants each and every one of us to truly listen to him. And whether or not we truly listen to him is our choice. It's our choice whether or not we're going to listen. Um, but I'm going to talk a little bit about these two chapters. And we're going to look at my jewelry because I've already preached enough. But I just want y'all to know that. A lot of people want to know why I'm happy, and I've always been that way, and I've always been um, 
I've never been one to want to get drunk or want to be high or I was just always really content just like I was and I think a lot of it has to do with Jesus living in me and and the fact that I'm just happy about just I just I just like life I like being alive I like um, I appreciate the things in my life that make me happy just simple things like hot water and getting in a shower and curling up in a bed and, and sleeping on a soft pillow and um, having my dogs next to me and my, my kids and my husband and, and and I mean you don't have to have I know there's a lot of you out there that are alone and you don't have anybody and I know it's hard because I was single for a long time and my husband was too but pets are nice and I mean they don't take the place of people but my goodness are they wonderful I mean they're wonderful and if I, I would suggest if you don't have a pet and you don't have a spouse or a, or a roommate that you get you a pet of any kind first get a cat they're easy but do something um, you know get out of the house if you can't physically get out of the house then find somebody to watch like me that'll get you out of the house I showed you home goods today um, but we're going to start talking a little bit today about Joseph's brothers. They're going in, they, we talked last week, they went into Egypt and they got the grain and they came back and now they're hungry again. And, and they, and they let their daddy know, Hey, look, we can't go back and get grain unless we take Benjamin. He flat said, we have to bring our younger brother with us. Now, J Benjamin, if you'll remember, um, was actually Joseph's brother and, um, by Rebecca, I believe, and so they, um, that was his actual brother by his mom, you know, they all had a bunch of moms, I mean, that all the brothers, they were all, had the same daddy, but they had a lot of different moms, but, um, they taught Isaiah into letting them go back and take Benjamin so that they don't starve to death, and they promise him that the oldest steps in and he says, look, daddy, I'll, 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 um, let you have both of my sons, their lives. If I don't bring Benjamin back because their daddy said, look, if you don't come back with Benjamin, I'm, I may as well just die because he, it was like, it would just kill him. Um, and it just, it blows my mind how parents could have favorites that much. Uh, of course, a lot of it was, God putting in his heart these feelings as well because God can, God can, um, I think he can prick our hearts, of course, with the Holy Spirit. Of course, back then, he could do whatever he wanted to. Um, it wasn't the age of grace, but anyway, they still had choices. I'm, I'm, I'm backing, backing up on myself here. But anyway, so they go and they go back and they go to get the grain and Joseph um, lets them come into his house, and he feeds them a big meal, and he lets them depart, and he tells his little workers to sneak a golden cup, or it might have been silver, but I think it was gold, and Benjamin's bag, and it makes it look like Benjamin was a thief. And so then he has them go back when they're on their journey back home. He has his guys go and tell, you know, catch them, and make out like he was a thief, and he brings them back to him. So when we when we're at the end of this chapter, um, we are at the end of um, chapter forty four, and it's called jo it's called Joseph's cup. And this is what happens. Judah was the oldest. Now, when they sold their brother into slavery, I'm sure that these older brothers had the most to do with it. You know, as well as I know, that if you hung around your cousins, which like, we lived all around each other in Colored Valley, and there was probably eight to ten of us playing all the time, but the older ones were the boss. And they could manipulate us and get us to do anything they wanted us to. And I'm sure the same thing happened with these brothers. And now we're, we're in a position where... Um, Joseph, they have knelt in front of Joseph just as he had dreamed. And they are in a position now to where they're begging. They're not just kneeling. Joseph, um, Judah is begging him 
But if you'll notice here, it says, So it was when we went up to your servant, my father, that we told him the words of my Lord. And our father said, Go back and buy us a little food. And we said, We cannot go down, for if our youngest brother is with us, then we will go down. We will not go down, um, for we may not see the man's face unless your youngest brother is with us. So they start telling him, you know, the whole story over again. But um, it says, Now therefore, please let your servant remain instead of the lad and as a slave to you, my Lord. And let the lad go up with his brothers, for how shall I go up to see my father if the lad is not with me? Least perhaps I see the evil that would come upon my father. We end there, and then we'll we'll take it up tomorrow night. Now, uh, it's so funny how so many people sign off when you start reading the Word of God. It is so powerful and so real. It scares the holy bejeebies out of people. And they want to they wanna make out like it don't, but it really does. Um, but anyway, I, I got to thinking those brothers were, it was all about blaming and blaming and who's going to blame and who's going to blame and blame and blame and blame. And they, and they mentioned that a lot. And I got to thinking, you know, um, and we do it even today. We, of course we do it today. People have never changed. Um, but the first thing we do when we get in trouble is we want to point our finger at somebody else. It's so hard to take and say, you know what? I shouldn't have done that. You know what? I'm sorry. It, and it's easier to, for me to say I'm sorry than it is to say it was my fault and I shouldn't have done something sometimes. It's cool what it's about, Right? But when you really, really think you're right, isn't it hard to turn around and admit that you're wrong? Uh, now, when the Holy Spirit pricks your heart and convicts you, it's easy to say you're sorry. And it's easy to say you're wrong. But I'm talking about prideful things in the flesh. It's really hard. Um, so I was, I was just thinking of that. You know, how we um, want to blame so much... Uh, on somebody, we always want to blame somebody. Um, I'm going to open up my bag just for fun in front of you guys today. And these were the craziest earrings. I just thought these were so funny. I should put my hair up in some so y'all can see my earrings. Let me see if I can find some real quick. I've got on my pajama pants. So, let me look and see if there's something over here. I gotta go in here and get a hair tie. Just give me one second. I need a hair tie. Is there not one in here? Y'all are going to be ready to wring my neck because I didn't find a hair tie. I went all the way in there and didn't find a hair tie. <sighs> well, right now I've got on green ones. Can you see them? Let me move this. Can you see my green ones? I don't have a stitch of makeup on. I didn't put on any makeup today. See? Those are my little green ones I got on. I'm an earring nut. Now, I do love earrings. I don't wear a lot of rings. Um, and I could care less about real gold and real diamonds. I could care less. I'm weird. I just like things that are pretty. Doesn't have to be real as long as it's pretty to me. Nothing matters to me. Riches don't matter to me because there's, there's, God's got all the riches in glory, right? We're going to be as rich as we need to be when we get up there. But who cares about that? 
But I do like things that are pretty. I'm not going to lie. I do. Now, I don't, I don't doll myself up a whole lot, but when I do, I like to have choices. <laughs> Since we're talking about choices. Um, look at these pretty. Y'all know my favorite color is green. Well, Chris's favorite color is green. My favorite color is orange. So, of course, that's our kitchen colors, but... Tweaked a little bit, both of them, because one's aqua green and one's... All right. Aren't these pretty? Let's see if you can see them. Let me just take this off for a second. Show these to y'all. See them? Aren't they pretty? Next time I'll just hold it up there. I'm goofy. Oh, wait, thinking of that. I'm not a paparazzi. I'm not selling it. I'm just showing it to y'all. Actually, these are blue. These are blue. These aren't green. I don't have anything blue. I'm glad I got those. I got blue in that, and I got blue in um, a circle one. Because I don't have anything blue. I put on something blue the other day, and I was like, I don't have anything to wear that's blue. See? And they're both stones, and they're kind of shiny. All right, then I got, y'all are not going to believe these earrings. I'm going to wear them in my kitchen, y'all. This is so funny, y'all. I should, I should get some of these and sell them on my website because they're so cute and me. This is the craziest thing you've ever seen. But they're saying, of course, I don't go in boutiques, so how would I know? But they're saying they're selling these in the boutiques. For like 20 bucks a pair. Look at this. Have you ever seen anything like it? That's the color of my kitchen. I thought I could wear my hair up in a ponytail. And do a video with those on. <laughs> Is that not the craziest thing? They are blue. But they're kind of like a turquoisey blue. Okay. I got those. Then I got these. And now that I look at them. You know, because you see them on the you see them on the thing. You don't really see them in person. Uh, these remind me of a redhead. I mean, they remind me of red hair or something. Um, I just bought them because they're crazy, and the crazier I look on film, I think the cuter it is. Don't you? All right. Let's see what else I got. I want to show y'all. I got a, I got a rose. Um, I got this. It's just a rose. I thought May likes roses, and she likes some stuff that's really, really simple. So like this is like a, um, kind of like a. I forget what they call this, copper or something like that, and it's a rose. I thought it was pretty. That looks like May to me. Uh, and I think that's probably the coolest stuff I got. Yep. I got these because I thought they looked like, um, they look kind of like trees or leaves or, um, they're big. But I thought I could wear them when my hair's up. But they look kind of like um, leaves. They're big. I like big earrings because I've got long hair. When you got short hair, you can wear little earrings. When I put my hair up, I can wear a lot smaller earrings, of course. So if y'all want to join me tomorrow and see me color my hair, um, you can. I'll probably log on, show you how I mix it, show you how I brush it on. Um, and then I will log off and have it time, because since I'm gray, since I do have a little bit of gray, um, I let it process 45 minutes, okay, always. I don't care what the thing says, I always wait 45 minutes. So then I'll process it for 45 minutes, then I'll rinse it out, and um, I'll probably rinse it out and blow dry it, and then I'll come back on, stick it up in rollers, and while my hair is up in rollers, I may do my makeup, um, 
and then take my hair down for y'all. I've done that one other time. If you hadn't seen it, then maybe I can watch it tomorrow. And um, I get my hair color at the local um, Sally Beauty Supply. So I get it there because the longer your hair is, the more color it takes. There's nothing wrong with box color. There's nothing wrong with it. But I do have to say, the last time I colored my hair, it was just a beautiful color. And it's really shiny. And it's still shiny, y'all. And it's been a long time since I colored it. So anyway, I guess I've talked enough tonight. I bought this crazy stuff to wear, but I thought it'd be fun on my show. And I don't know what I'm going to do when I get down to St. Mary's about my orange and my green. I still love my orange. Those are the choices I got to make. Some more choices. Thank goodness they're not life choices, right? All right. We think a lot of the choices that we make don't affect us later on, and they do. You know, we think that they're simple and they wind up not being so simple. Um, if we, I know I'm, I'm guilty. I don't pray about every single thing I purchase and I don't, uh, like I should, you know, I don't. I'm not going to lie to y'all. Um, but I'm sure that if I did, my life would be even more simple and even easier than it is. But God is so good to me. I can't complain. He is so good to me and he blesses me each and every day he makes me happy um i put my verse my life verse up on the page today um and so if you don't know what that verse says look it up i'm gonna let you look it up it means a lot to me um and so we'll say our prayers and i will see you guys hopefully tomorrow coloring my hair okay Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today, and we thank you for your plans for us. We thank you for the plans for this world, and we thank you for your plans that you made for your Son, Jesus Christ, to come here and die for our sin and be raised again. I just, I'm, I just praise you for the, the chance that you have given us to be your children and the choices that you have given us that we make. Um, can make a difference in our life eternally, and I thank you for that. Um, I mean, we have so much to be thankful for and so much to be excited about, and if we ever got on fire um, about how good you are, how great you are, and how strong and mighty and wonderful and good you are to your children, and we happen to be one of those children, we would get more excited about life, and we'd be more excited about telling others about you. Um, and we just, we, I, know, I know that that's why you brought joy into my heart. Um, be with everyone who takes the time to come on here and listen to your word and want to know more about you. Uh, who opens the, the, the pages of your beautiful word, whether it be on their computer, on their tablet, or in a written book. Um, I just thank you for the, the word of God, Lord, and uh, the flesh as you brought him here. And in the word that you've had the um, had it pinned on paper through your Holy Spirit, may you be with each and every one of us as we make the choices of the day tomorrow. And may we rest well tonight. In Christ's name, we pray. Amen. I don't like the black jewelry, especially the the black wedding rings. Seen those? My wedding rings. I never even wear my wedding rings. I should be ashamed, but I picked my wedding. I told Chris I wanted uh, rings that looked like my mom's and my grandmother. So they're just the old-fashioned wedding set with the big square in the middle and then the two little squares on the sides. Um, and so that's what he bought me. Well, of course, after I got cancer and I gained weight, I had them resized. And I can wear them now, but they're pretty tight. Um, so, I, but I've gained, I mean, I, when I got cancer, I weighed 140 pounds. Now I weigh 208. So it's, I'm a good bit different. But anyway, I just, I don't wear them that much anymore. Um, and he don't wear his either, but God knows we're married and we know we're married. But, um, it's just not something we do. Um, we're not big into jewelry, you know. I like fun jewelry. 
Um, I do. I think it's fun. I wear my rings on Sunday when I go to church, and that's about the only time I put them on, my, my wedding rings. Um, and my mom and my grandmother, all of them, wore theirs all the time. They never took them off, but I'm just not like that. I don't like them on my hands, and especially when I'm when I'm cleaning and when I'm um, in the kitchen and all that. For one, I'm too big for them, really, and they're not comfortable. That's part of the reason. Um, I hope y'all have a blessed night. See y'all tomorrow. Bye. I love you.